whether we're talking about Windows or Linux, there's basically two good video players. You have VLC, if you don't just want a video player, you want a whole video suite, and the other is MPV. It is very simple, it's very fast, it's lightweight, and just plays videos. And then half the other good video players on Linux are just MPV GUIs. And with the release of 0.35, MPV suddenly got a whole lot better on the Linux desktop. Now, this change list might look a little bit messy and a little bit confusing if you have no idea what most of this terminology actually means. But there is a couple of really important takeaways from this. The first one is a big change on the audio side. Like many applications are beginning to do, it now has native Pipewire support. Now, as is one of the purposes of Pipewire, you've always been able to run MPV through Pipewire through the use of Pipewire Pulse, which basically gives access to a Pulse Audio API, but this API is being managed by Pipewire. Now though, you don't have to use that. You can have it run directly through Pipewire. Now this might seem really weird to do because one of the major benefits of running Pipewire is everything is being managed under the Pipewire banner, whether it's Pulse Audio, Jack, or anything else. But even though my experience has been, I wouldn't say great, like it's worked. I, I don't really have a great experience with audio. If the audio is playing and it's not crackly and my volume sliders work, that's all I expect. Some other users though don't exactly have a good experience with Pipewire Pulse. Sometimes audio may stutter and due to the extra layers of, you know, audio servers that are running, it is going to lead to a higher CPU overhead. It may not be that big of a deal on a modern desktop system, but on a laptop and especially an older laptop, this can be a bigger deal. Or just generally, you don't want to use your CPU more because that's going to lead to a higher battery consumption. Now, I don't believe in its current state, MPV is going to automatically detect that you're running a pipe wire. So you are going to have to go and manually set it. At least that's what it says in the documentation. It doesn't have any mention here of pipe wire itself. The way you do this though is pretty simple. Either include the launch option dash dash AO for audio output or include the AO option inside of your MPV config, and then list out the drivers you want to use. Now, if you want to have any fallback drivers, then include a comma at the end, and it will then just run through the list if what you've specified is not available. So basically, all you do is find where Pipewire is in this list, and then use that name. It's just Pipewire, so nothing that crazy. There are some things you can configure with Pipewire if you want to do this, but for most configurations, you probably won't have to touch this. Now, it's fairly likely, but it's not guaranteed the version of MPV available in your distro's repos is going to have the Pipewire driver compiled into it. If it doesn't and you actually want to make use of it, you're going to basically just have to go and compile it yourself. But I can't see any reason why it wouldn't be included unless your distro specifically does not make Pipewire available. Now, Pipewire is one of these relatively new technologies on the Linux desktop, and you might know where I'm going with this, because the second change is related to video output. Video output on Wayland, which just got a whole lot better because it finally supports DMA buff. Now, just saying DMA buff probably doesn't mean that much to you. DMA in this context stands for direct memory access. This is a direct memory access buffer. In short, DMA buff is a mechanism to more quickly and easily share resources between the GPU and the CPU, mostly relevant for things like images and video work like in MPV. So presuming you've got a GPU that MPV is actually making use of, you somehow need to get your video file into the GPU and then GPU is going to do some GPU things and then display it on the screen. So with the traditional method of using VO equals GPU and MPV, which is video output equals GPU, what you would do is upload the video directly to the GPU 
and then tell the GPU to decode that video with something like VARPI or whatever else needs to be used. Then you will sample the Chroma subsampled frame into a linear RGB frame and then tell the compositor where that linear RGB frame is available in the video memory, which can then tell the GPU where to actually present that frame. But it turns out that a lot of those steps are kind of unnecessary if you're using an intelligent Wayland compositor. So the first couple of steps are exactly the same. You would upload the video to the GPU and then tell the GPU to go and decode that video. But instead of doing that sampling and all of that stuff, which isn't really needed, what you can do is immediately tell the compositor where that frame is available in video memory and then present the frame directly from that internal format and then the GPU can resample that frame when it's actually displaying it. Which depending on the pixel format you're actually working in may not be necessary in the first place, it might already be in the right format and you're basically good to go. Now for an application like MPV, this might not seem like that big of a deal. You're just playing video, it surely can't really be worth that much. And yeah, it's not a major improvement, but some users testing this out are seeing like a 2-3% to less CPU usage. It's not 50% less, but if you're in a context where you're a heavy video watcher on a mobile or a laptop, that can lead to a lot of extra battery life over the span of the day and the lifespan of the device. And Linux doesn't exactly have a good reputation for battery life anyway, so any amount of help is absolutely going to be beneficial. Now you may be wondering what Wayland compositors are going to support this. The answer is most of them. But like most things with Wayland, when things are not working, there is one compositor and one compositor base that doesn't actually support it. I think you know what the answer is. Gnome and Mutter. Because these do support DMA buff and have for a quite a while now. The problem is the thing they don't support. Right now, they don't have support for the YUV formats that the GPU is going to want to work with. So when you enable this, uh, a lot of people are just seeing a black screen. So it's not exactly a good experience, but MPV has never really been in a good state on GNOME anyway, and the devs have been pretty outspoken about that, adding warnings about using GNOME and things like that. So either way, it's going to work most places, and if you're on GNOME, there are specific things you can use on GNOME to watch videos and things like that. Now, like with the audio output, if you want to go and modify the video output, this is either done with the dash dash VO option or included inside of your MPV config. And once again, you can list out the drivers you want to use in the order you want to use them, or if you want to just cycle through everything available if the ones you list aren't working for whatever reason, include a comma at the end. And then to enable the DMA buff support, if we scroll down this list, there's an option here called DMA buff dash Wayland. Now, even though it's been merged, it is still kind of experimental. Right now, the OSD does not work. That is the on-screen display. So if you were just using MPV RAW, you're going to have to rely on key bindings, which isn't really that big of a deal. I do so anyway, but I know some people do like to use the OSD. And for the benefit of a better experience on Wayland, personally, I think it's a pretty fair trade. But let me know what you think down below. Do you care about any of these changes with MPV? Do you even use MPV? I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribers, and Obero Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me. And... I'm out.